Chicago Sky basketball is back in the Windy City on this Sunday afternoon, and it's the second take of the weekend between the LA Sparks and the Chicago Sky. Thank you for joining us on WCIU. Megan McEwen and Lisa Byington with you. And Megan, this is kind of a setup that we'll see a little bit more and more with the different scheduling the WNBA has this year, and the fact that these two teams are meeting for the second time in three days. Going back to that Friday game, Chicago's got to clean up the turnover story. Yeah, Chicago and the dreaded T word turnovers committing 28 last ball game. Los Angeles leads the WNBA in turnovers forced a game. That being said, many of those Chicago errors were unforced. Sky head coach James Wade saying it comes down to moving without hesitation and having better spacing on the offensive side of the ball. And Brittany Sykes on the LA side was certainly a major part of that. And she is part of our scouting report brought to you by BMO, a proud partner of the Chicago Sky. Sparks guard for East Sykes will be coming off the bench providing that defensive spark for Los Angeles. She racked up a career high five steals last game and it was that defensive intensity that set the tone on that side of the ball for Los Angeles for the entirety of Friday night's game. And so Los Angeles's head coach Derek Fisher seen some changes to his lineup. The starting lineups brought to you by Walgreens trusted since 1901. Here's some of the changes. Arella Garantes gets her second straight start. Now she started for the first time in her career on Friday. That's Sykes coming off the bench. But it's Bria Holmes who gets her first start of the season in the place of Chanae Ogumike, who was a late scratch, we were told, because of a right knee soreness. So she will not play today for L.A. And James Wade. You know, he's going to be playing with eight players, not the nine players that he's accustomed to in the in the last couple of games. Natasha Mack has been waived as of today, but the injury report you see Candace Parker again in street clothes. The injury report brought to you by the University of Chicago Medicine, the Chicago Sky's exclusive medical provider. Allie Quigley also out with a hamstring and Candace Parker dealing with the left ankle sprain. Now, Megan, we did have a chance to talk to James Wade in the pregame about their status, and he seemed very optimistic that we could possibly see the both of them sometime soon, if not maybe as early as this week. And boy, are the Sky in need and really looking forward to having those two players back at the moment between Dolson missing in addition to Parker and Quigley. That's about 36 points per game of scoring for the Chicago Sky. And congrats to Steph Dolson and the Team USA that's qualified for the three-on-three -three Olympics as well today, that becoming official. And so that means Steph Dolson will be returning sometime this week as well. And that competition taking place in Austria, so it's a little bit of travel time and, and some jet lag that she's going to have to deal with. But hopefully the Chicago Sky can get back to full strength, if not this week. Now the tip goes to L.A. and into the hands of Christy Tolliver, who had a slow start on Friday. All of her points coming in the second half. And Kalia Copper, look at that tight defense already on Tolliver. She's got that step back move and nearly knocked down that three point shot. Copper has the length to guard a player like Tolliver, who's very good at creating space, but Toller with that length is able to get a hand up and contest. Tight coverage there on this side with Wheeler defending Courtney Vandersloot. Chicago in those white pinstripe jerseys, of course, those, those three Nike jerseys that they've been rotating through, and Sloot, look what I found. A couple of points, that's it. Speaking of rotating through, just their casual sidestep and finishing at the rim when there are no other options on the offensive side of the ball. That's what happens when you're a veteran. She's been so good at that, right? Like kind of the spin move to create space for herself, and it's the first two and first points of the game. A minute into this one, here is Holmes again getting the start in the place of Chanae Ogumike. Holmes played about 10 minutes in that, that Friday showdown against Chicago, and Sloot's got a quick four points. Already in this game, Chicago coming out a lot more poised. They seem to be in control of this game so far. Courtney Vandersloot playing in career game number 300 here today as a Chicago Sky member and just so valuable to this franchise as she gets a pick there and a great start for Chicago and Vandersloot. No look to Hebrew and it's 6-0 Chicago. 
important here. Vandersloot's teammates always have to be on their toes because if you are in the vicinity of the basket, Vandersloot's going to find you the ball and get you to score. Great energy to start here for the Sky. Yeah, two minutes into this thing, a, a much different feel for Chicago here today. And Garantes, which is left wide open after a couple of Sky players kind of collided and fell to the court. Defensive miscommunication leads to that wide open Arella Garantes three pointer. No, Garantes now second three point make of her career. She hit her first one on Friday. There's Sloot with the cut. And it's, it's all Courtney Vandersloot here to start. Already the spacing on the offensive side of the ball for the sky much better. That's why they have open driving lanes to get to the basket. Courtney Vandersloot has accounted for all eight points. Six points she scored herself and the assist to Hebert and she's looking for more. And we play on. How about this? Astu Dufault getting into it. And you thought this was coming. Derek Fisher calling the timeout. A great start for Chicago. Just what Chicago needed after that game on Friday. Coming down, starting off really strong, setting the tone on the defensive side of the ball, getting into passing lanes, and then offensively, the spacing so much better. And that allows driving lanes and players like Courtney Vandersloot, one of the best creators in the league, to create not only for her teammates, but also for herself. And again, the defensive side of the ball, good things happen when you get into passing lanes. Chicago Sky Basketball is brought to you by Wintrust Financial, the official debit card and bank of the Chicago Sky. And by University of Chicago Medicine, the exclusive medical provider of the Chicago Sky. And by Aerial Investments, slow and steady wins the race. But slow and steady with the start that Sloot and Chicago has had a 10 to 3 advantage and Sloot accounting for all 10 points. She scored six herself, a perfect three for three and assisted on the other two buckets. Chicago is at its best when it gets out and runs in transition, and that is led a lot of times by Vandersloot as Ruth Hebert picks up a foul. Chicago already has four fast break points in the first quarter. To put it out of perspective, last game, they had two the whole entire matchup. So I'll say this. We talk about the energy is different out of the gates here for Chicago, and we had a chance to talk to James Wade in the pregame on a Zoom call. His energy was off the charts as well. He was in a great mood, and it surprised us because you wouldn't think that from a, coming from a guy or a team that's lost three straight, but he just I think he just had a good feeling about today. Coaches, when you have really good practices, kind of come in and carry that energy, and you were like, does he know something we don't know? And apparently they do because the energy this guy had brought to start out this first quarter was not what we were expecting. Here's Wheeler pulling up on the transition. I mean, I, I, I you're starting to think, like I know that they had declared that Candace Parker and Allie Quigley yesterday were out of this game, but you're thinking, is that, is their status change? <laughs> Hebert with the offensive rebound and putback. Hebert staying aggressive down low, trying to finish the play. And just looking actually at the Chicago Sky bench on a bucket like that, the energy is high on the bench side as well. They're standing up, they're cheering, they're into the game early, and it's a 12 to 3 advantage. Heber, there's some contact made. They're going to call it on Heber, which is number two on Ruthie, and an and one chance here for Neka Ogumake. Ogumake is so efficient when she gets the ball, fighting for position, squaring up. She's got to move to the counter move, so she kind of lowers her shoulder there a bit too to try to create that separation and then Ruthie Heber gets called for the block but I could see that going either way as well with the dropping of that shoulder but Neka Ogumike make no mistake is a very efficient strong physical player. Well Heber now is going to have to sit out a little bit picking up a couple of personals and it's Azaree Stevens who has checked in right now. Now remember that Chicago and James Wade only play not with nine players that they've become used to in the last four games or so, but the eight players now. Natasha Mack was waived as of today, and you know, we know that Steph Dolson is on her way home. We've been told that perhaps maybe Parker and Quigley could play this week. So maybe that number grows to full strength eventually. Six point advantage now for Chicago. And Wheeler again finding Ogumake, who gets bumped and fouled there in the lane by Kalia Copper this time. 
Los Angeles having success when they get the ball inside by drawing those fouls, an area where they were successful last game as well, but we haven't seen as much of the outside shooting from Los Angeles as we saw against uh, the Sky on Friday yet. You know, 25 total fouls for Chicago in that Friday game. And, and certainly some fouls that really changed the momentum of this game as Sloot gets another bucket. She's a perfect four for four to start. Vander Sloot with such a good feel of when to pass it and when to keep it for herself, especially in traffic and transition, just deciding to keep it for two. You see the Sky and the Sparks have split the series last year. And Chicago has only beaten LA nine times in franchise history. Let's go back, Sloot, what a start, man. Vander Sloot getting it done on the defensive side of the ball as well as the offensive, but it always starts in the break and transition. This is when Vander Sloot is at her best. The vision on the floor, so fast, able to get up, reads where the defense is, and sees that she's got a clear path to the basket. Sloot, I mentioned this is her 300th game that she has played in her career, and, and first in, in so many categories. We, we've seen her this past week, last Tuesday, as a matter of fact, become number one all-time scoring in Chicago Sky franchise history as Diamond De Shields is off the mark there. And Christy Tolliver in L.A. wants to run a little bit. Amanda Zowie B playing in game number two of 2021 gets the bucket. Both of these teams feed off of that intensity and momentum on the defensive side of the ball and turn that into good offense. Sloot, eight of the 14 points here so far. And again, a couple of the assists and a couple of steals here to begin with. Kalia Kapper taking it strong. And the bump on Amanda Zowie B that time. So Kalia Kapper able to get to the rim the second time in this first quarter. Again, on the offensive side of the ball for Chicago, the spacing so much better, allowing those open driving lanes for players to try to create and slash the basket. Kapper right now is standing as Chicago's leading scorer here so far this year. About 16.6 .6 points per game that she's averaging. Picked up 11 in the, the meeting on Friday against the Sparks. Here's Shyla Hill. Pull back, that's a long two, and she's short. Taya Cooper, who's checked into the game for the Sparks, throws it away, and there's Sykes once again. It's like one on two, and she nearly created the turnover there. I mean, she just flies like Superman trying to get those types of takeaways going, and it looks like you're going to have. And we've got a timeout called by Chicago. So that was something to watch. Let's take another look. I'm glad you finished my sentence there because there was a lot of commotion happening as Ray Stevens makes the heads up play, getting a hand up to prevent any sort of vision. And Sykes getting physical with Shyla Heal, trying to get into the rookie, force her to be uncomfortable. And then Chicago's going to call a timeout to try to prevent Brittany Sykes from having her way down there. <laughs> it's, it's easier said uh, than done. You know, she had five steals in that first game uh, against Chicago on Friday. So a break in the action after Chicago called the timeout. Gives us a chance to remind you that Avison Young is a proud sponsor of the Chicago Sky. Check out Avison Young and see why they are the fastest growing real estate services firm in the world. You know, it's, it's interesting with this setup, the schedule setup and James Wade has has talked about it, the fact that, and, and, and so has Derek Fisher, the fact that it's it's unique to play a team twice in three days, and with the the traveling restrictions, trying to keep these teams safe, we're going to see more and more of that. That's usually obviously not something you see until the playoffs. Or, and uh, I just wonder, like, if, if sometimes it's it's beneficial, right? Because especially with Chicago, there there's a they get another crack at them. Just you know, a couple days later. There are things you can improve, and, and maybe, you know, that, that day in between, that breather that they had um, to go back and, and look at that Friday tape is something that Chicago needed. And it freshened the mind, so that was a Friday night game, so to have those, a lot of mistakes made and to be able to correct them and have them fresh in your mind is a huge advantage, and also from the standpoint of rest for both these teams, the WNBA has to fly commercially, which is crazy because it is the only league professionally one of the few that still have to do that. So for them to 
you know, be able to stay an extra day in the city and get that rest is crucial. You need to get that Megan McEwen uh, jet sponsorship <laughs> here with the WNBA going. If I had a jet sponsorship, <laughs> as you have to fall getting the bucket, I would make sure the WNBA was taken care of with some jets. <laughs> so if anyone wants to sponsor me in that endeavor, feel free to hit me up. <laughs> Neko Gumake taking it strong and another and one for Neka. Agumake doing her work before she catches the ball, and that's why she's such an efficient player. The footwork and the ability to provide a counter move to how the defense guards her up. So she gets the footwork, gets the position she wants, and the squares up on Dufal, has a quickness advantage and that physicality, not afraid of the contact, so strong at the finish. She's third in the league in, in terms of points in the paint scoring. She typically gets about 11 per game in that category. She just is someone who is, we, we've addressed it, right, that she's so efficient as a scorer, but does, doesn't really try to do too much out of her skill set. It's a great, great move by Dufal that time. Dufal looking like a guard, very athletic with that little spin move finishing in the paint. To your point, though, Agumake able to get that positioning early is why she's so efficient in the paint. Cooper gave up the three and again tosses it away. So a couple of turnovers here to start and Sykes always looking for that steal, picked up the foul that time. Sykes staying aggressive on the defensive side of the ball. It's what she's best at. But if you take a look at Dufal, check out this one-on-one -on -one move. Creating your own shot in the WNBA is clutch. And she's able to just do a little spin, finish in the paint, just a little stop, pop, and drop. Dufal showing off some guard skills with that 6'5 frame. <laughs> She has scored in double figures three of the last four games. As a starter, she's basically averaging about 12 and a half points per game and nine rebounds a game. So, so factor that in. She's nearly averaging a double-double as a starter. Sykes is down on the court, and we have an offensive foul call, I believe, on Ruthie Hebert. It is, and that's number three. the replay right side of your screen 15 in purple going against Ruthie Hebert 24 in white and Hebert completely takes that arm out and runs it right into Sykes jaw to get that moving screen offensive foul called well she's only played four minutes and Hebert has picked up three personals and that's tough again for James Wade who's already up against it with a, a shortened bench and a shortened roster here today Eight players available. Nine players are dressed here for LA. Scoop shot for Cooper won't fall. Ruthie Heber did a nice job with the defensive assignment on Friday night against Shanae Gumake, only holding her to four points. James Wade really happy with her performance on that defensive side of the ball. So someone they're looking to tonight as well to try to limit that any type of productivity down low as Azari Stevens knocks it down from the top of the key. <laughs> her fourth three-point make of the season. She's actually shooting. She hasn't shot a whole lot of those, but she's shooting above 60% from behind the three-point line this year. And anytime Chicago or any team for that matter can get their six four players to step out and shoot threes, it only spreads the floor. Or how about this? Working as a little point center, perhaps. Point centers, I tell you what, are like unicorns in this game. So efficient and so hard to stop. Azari oh, Stevens acting like she's 5'8 finishing in the lane like that. I, I think I saw like even an in-out dribble. <laughs> On that, on that transition, and she rips down the rebound here, so some quality possessions here for Stevens, but the Sky toss it away that time. And two turnovers here for Chicago. And they're coming off of a franchise worst 28 turnovers on Friday. We would trust it at the top. You know, LA scoring 29 points off of those turnovers on Friday night. Just two here so far in this quarter, and the shield's off the mark. Brittany Sykes guarding Diamond to Shield, so Los Angeles' best defender trying to limit the Shield's effectiveness offensively, seeing her as the biggest threat on the floor at the moment. And to Zowie B, you could feel that one coming. She was calling for it, and she has hit her third three-point make of the year. Speaking of threats from the top of the key, Zowie B has been nothing but money from three-point range this series. And she's playing with a ton of confidence. And, and what a boost coming off the bench for L.A. She was in dealing with a back injury that she tweaked at practice, was listed as probable on Friday, but was able to play. Played about 16 minutes there as the Shields gets the bucket on the back door. Spacing so key for the Chicago team. 
wide open lane that Shields is able to take advantage of. Spacing is that buzzword, right? That you're the mention that James Wade has talked to us about. Spacing and screening better. And the final few seconds here of the quarter. Shot clock is still in play, just a slight differential. Here's Cooper from the elbow. And Stevens with some time to push. Copper was out and running, gets the contact. He can't get it to drop. Kalia Copper looking like a football wide receiver on that play, coming down, catching it in the air, and having to go up with some contact to try to get that ball off the miss. Azari Stevens, who has now become a point forward this game, look at the catch from Kalia Copper. And that ball bounced about every single angle on the back of the basket before falling out. Since the first free throw, her first points here today. 13-point advantage, a really good first quarter, a much-needed start here for Chicago. Now, maintaining this through the next three quarters obviously will be a key for them here today. And Copper has been really, really good from the free throw line here so far this year, shooting about 90% from there. 27 to 13 is your first quarter score. Chicago will take it. Looking to snap a three-game losing skid and get the first home win of the year. University of Chicago Medicine is proud to be the exclusive medical provider for your Chicago Sky. Use Chicago Medicine at the forefront. Well, the turnover story actually is something to talk about here in the first quarter, but it's actually on the L.A. side. They've committed five in the first quarter. Chicago able to score six points off those five turnovers, but most impressed with Chicago's ability to get out and run. That is when the sky is at its best, when they can get out and get those transition opportunities. Eight fast break points for Chicago in that first quarter. I mentioned it earlier in the game, but Chicago only had two fast break points just last game. So that's an area where you have players like Kalia Copper and guard Diamond to Shields who are so quick and athletic on the side running up. So when Chicago can get out and run, that is when they are at their best. You saw Cheneo Gumike there in sweats. We won't see her again if you're just joining us. A right knee soreness, so she's out. She's a scratch, it was a late scratch. And Bria Holmes getting the start for LA. Sykes with that hawking defense, and here's Diamond to Shields looking for it. Sloot has checked back in and drills the three. I don't know if she's going to miss today. De Shields does a great job coming off that screen and drawing two Los Angeles defenders and finding Vandersloot on the kick out. A much more open shot because two defenders were drawn. A 30 to 13 advantage. Sloot hasn't missed here so far. And here's Nia Coffey, who's actually had a, a good run of it shooting-wise as well. She's coming off of nine points on Friday. She was three of four from three. And she got a piece, it looks like, from that Stevens offering. Here's Cooper on the push looking for some numbers. And checking it inside, Coffee. she's got the mismatch, kicks it out instead, Sykes, that's a three-point shot. Great pass from Coffee. reading the defense, seeing Sykes who moved over to make herself available in rhythm for that three. Chicago had 20 of its 27 points in the first quarter in the paint. Certainly looking a, a little bit more aggressive in the first 10 minutes. They're going to give Cooper that shot here so far. And she's over to begin this game. Here's Sloop. Five for five from the field. Remember, she's coming off a game on Friday where she was just one of six. Only had two points. A much different start for her. Do fall. Can't get that one to fall. Looks like LA is just trying to hunt down maybe that three point shot. Watts ties her up. Beautifully done. Watts making the right defensive play. Almost out overran Sykes originally on the closeout. Sykes takes it off the dribble. And then Watts coming down, not fouling, making sure she gets all ball to get that jump ball called. 
So it'll be Watts and Sykes who will jump it up. With 13 seconds left on the shot clock into the hands of Neka Ogumike, just like they drew it up. Short corner jumper. That's a high level challenging shot. Ogumike makes it look so easy. And a little bit too tight there for Wheeler, who picks up the foul. Los Angeles really trying to get into Courtney Vandersloot. When Vandersloot has limited space to move, she becomes more turnover prone. However, this game, a lot more space for Vandersloot to move. Therefore, she's been able to be a lot more effective creating for herself and her teammates. I thought that was interesting when we talked to James Wade about the pressure defensively for LA as Copper can't get it to fall. He's, he mentioned that, the, the, the spacing for his point guards in particular to be able to have the room to move and maybe even try to pass or dribble away from that pressure. They got a tie up here and another jump ball coming up. Chicago's level of intensity has been sustained pretty consistently from the top of this game. Just coming out with a whole different attitude. You can see it in the body language on the floor. Again, we could feel it just with the energy and the body language from James Wade in our Zoom call in the pregame. You can see, you can now tell things in Zoom and read body language. <laughs> That's the only way that you can try to read body language in this pandemic era right now. We've all become very good at uh, reading things on Zoom. Right, exactly. Screen body language is now a thing. Here's Coffee for three. And an offensive rebound for Sykes. She's looking for it. We're gonna give Coffee another chance. Takes it inside with a contact and that rims out. One area Chicago has struggled with is trying to limit offensive rebounds for opponents. They actually lead the WNBA in allowing offensive rebounds for those opponents. And a foul is called offensively for Chicago. Well, they picked up another one. I want to remind you, Tick Pick is an official secondary ticket marketplace of the Chicago Sky. All kinds of guaranteed best ticket prices to live events in Chicago concerts, theater, sports, of course, Sky games as well. Support the sky by visiting tickpick.com slash sky and get your seats today. Well, she's got a seat there. A student do fall does on the on the bench right now. Now you have multiple players that are dealing with a little bit of foul trouble in the front court for Chicago, joining Ruth Hebert on the bench. Yeah, two fouls now for Dufall. And Hebert has been on the bench with the three personals, only has played four minutes. She stays on the bench. Now remember, Azaray Stevens was on, at least as of Friday, was on a 16-minute restriction for a game and, and dealing with that foot injury. And Stevens right now might have to pick up. She's played 10 minutes already here in this first half. James Wade might have to maybe bargain with the athletic training staff to get her uh, a little bit more time here today. Not always an easy bargaining tool as Wheeler gets the bucket to go against a 6-5 Azure Stevens with that length. Wheeler's first points of this game, and LA chipping away at it. They've cut the lead here to 10. Largest lead has been 17. And we've got an official's timeout, it looks like. Something with Stephanie Watts. Sorry? We have 30 seconds. Looks like maybe some blood on that left leg. They got to tidy up a little bit. And this is where the athletic trainers come to shine. The pressure <laughs> is on. The cameras are on. How fast can you stop the bleeding? Yep. And so they, they've stopped it there on that left leg. They had about 30 seconds to get it done. And they passed the test. 15 seconds on the shot clock in this possession with the Sky taking it out from the sideline. Stephanie Watts actually coming off a career high eight points in that Friday game. She was effective offensively. A, a little bright spot for the Sky in that game. Sky were able to get some bench production. Always important to be a spark, especially as a rookie come off. Prove to your coach that you deserve to be at this level. Oh, look at that transition. Amanda Zowie B and one. 
Zowie B running hard, getting rewarded with the layup and the foul. Zowie B has been such a valuable ad for Los Angeles. I know they're happy to have her back, but just staying with it, not worrying about where the defense is behind her, finishing strong towards the basket to get the end one. Signed with Los Angeles as a free agent in February, five years with New York. And she just, she looks each year that she has been in the pros since she played at Minnesota, each year physically as well as her game. I just feel like she's gotten better and better. Sparks head coach Derek Fisher saying he loves her passion that she brings to the game as well. Not only can she shoot the three, get down low and go to work in the paint, but also the passion and drive she brings to the game is so huge for this LA team. We will take a quick timeout. LA though, not going away. They've cut the lead back to single digits, a seven point advantage for Chicago. Magellan Corporation is a proud sponsor of your Chicago Sky. To get the Sky trying to snap a three game home losing skid, but LA is making it tough in the last four minutes. A 10 nothing Los Angeles run. Much of that coming from that second group. Amanda Zowie B leading it with eight points, the way she's able to step out and shoot and also run and get to the basket. I've been impressed with the play of Brittany Sykes, who's now going to take a break on the bench for Los Angeles. But Sykes' ability to just provide that defensive intensity. She gets on the ground, fights for loose balls, forced Chicago to call a timeout because she was really disruptive in the backcourt towards uh, Shyla Heal. So just a player that brings that defensive intensity and has really been a huge spark for this 10-0 run that Los Angeles is currently on. A huge spark for the Sparks. And I keep trying not to say it because it seems like the simplest pun, but I can't help myself. Sometimes it's unavoidable. It's unavoidable. And I like inappropriate. That. Copper with the kick out, but to no one. Except Tanya Edwards, the assistant coach, and she's not eligible to play. And so LA, again, a 10-0 run in the last four minutes, and again, trying to cut into this advantage. Largest lead has been 17, and that is a pretty reliable option. Neko Ogumike, though, off the mark that time. Dufal doing a better job of limiting Agumake's vision, making that a little high, high, harder shot. That's the H word I was looking for. Harder <laughs> shot. Well, Neka's first miss of the game. Seven points, three of four shooting after that attempt. Here's Diamond to Shield. She passes up the three. 0 for 3 from three, by the way. And we have a shot clock violation. We'll head back the other way. The shield's not being given a ton of room by Los Angeles to make any sort of play. The shields is at her best when she can face up, get to the basket, create in the paint, but Los Angeles really crowding her right now, not giving her the space to move. It's interesting because you look at the shields numbers, she's one of seven shooting, just two points. And then you look at Kalia Copper's numbers, she is 0 for four from the field. Her only two points coming from the free throw line. So a combined four points between those two, the two leading scores, for Chicago for the season right now. And Mia Coffey getting that bucket does a great job creating separation down low. Feels where the defender is and able to just drop that shoulder and step back with the left hand. In the turnover story, six turnovers each for these teams. And you saw there on the graphic that Chicago had 28 on Friday. There's a take, maybe that'll get Diamond going. Those are just the little buckets sometimes a player needs in order to see the ball go in the basket and get some momentum. Amanda Zowie B already has a one three-point make and the offensive rebound and put back for Holmes. Chicago completely misses a box out. Holmes takes advantage with that rebound put back. Four second chance points now for LA. And Kappa toss it away. It's turnover number seven. A two-on-one break. Zowie B will keep it unforced errors where there's a miscommunication amongst the Sky players happened a couple of times on Friday. Tonight, same thing where Chicago thought that there was going to be a screen, but then the pop out didn't happen and therefore a turnover occurs. And you mentioned it, how impressed you are with Amanda Zowie B. 10 points in 13 minutes off the bench. And this is as close as LA has been since the opening minutes of this game. Win Trust is proud to be Chicago's bank and the official bank of your Chicago Sky. Get your exclusive Chicago Sky debit card today when you sign up today. Win Trust built here.
four here on well, Chicago Sky. As good of a first quarter that they've had, they're struggling in the second quarter, just 22% shooting. Two of nine from the floor, and those five turnovers, that, that T word is popping up again for the Sky. And credit Los Angeles and the spark that second unit has provided 15 bench points for, uh, for the Sparks, rather. And not to mention Ruth Hebert on the bench for Chicago right now with three fouls. She was really having an ace game in that first quarter for them. Yeah, again, she's only played four minutes here in the first half, has been saddled with the foul trouble, hasn't been able to come in, and Diamond, what a block! Those are the types of plays that Diamond De Shields is capable of making on the defensive side of the ball. Her athleticism and length at 6'1 anticipates, boom! Block party, Diamond De Shields just has that ability to get up and block shots and cause any sort of havoc on the defensive side. Well, I think twice then taking it inside here as a foul is committed once again. And that is uh, Copper's second. Copper, another player that Chicago is looking for to provide that defensive spark. Another long body that's able to get into passing lane and be really disruptive. Now seven to shoot. LA's got to hustle a little bit. Wheeler with the crossover and finds Coffee, who can't convert. One second on the shot clock, and there's a violation. Chicago doing a better job. That defensive possession, getting into the paint, crowding Los Angeles more, not providing them with a lot of room to move. Well, Tolliver stepping up and providing some pressure now on Sloot, bringing it up. Foul committed on Coffee that time. That is her first. The defensive intensity has picked up for Los Angeles. Anytime any of Chicago's bigs are catching the ball, the defenders are right up on crowding the space, trying to limit any sort of vision and get them to turn it over. And foot on the line. That's a deep two offensive rebound for Astu Dufal. who's got nine rebounds here. That's Neko Gumake. And all right, her sister, her younger sister, Cheney, as we mentioned, is unavailable. But let's take a look at what happened to Neka. Right in the middle of the paint at the O of Chicago, Dufal's arm just comes down and hits Neka Gumake in the face, 45 in white and 30 in purple. And just a basketball play, arm comes down, head at the wrong place at the wrong time. And Tanae Ogumake, who again is unavailable because we're told is a right knee soreness. You see her in the, the yellow warm up.
continue to work on Neka Ogumake there on the bench. And James Wade has come over in a friendly exchange there with Cheney Ogumake. Cheney Ogumake walking over, talking to Coach Wade, and friendly exchange. At half court, she goes back to take a look at her sister. Work being done to her face right now. Looking like a nose situation. So we've seen some blood. And so free throws coming up. They just got to decide if NECA is okay to... to they they got to decide who the free throw shooter is, basically, on the L.A. side. And NECA has stood up and is returning to the court here. That takes so much toughness to get cracked in the face. You knock your nose, man. You get the eyes watering. That is a painful injury. And Neko Gumake, within five minutes, is coming to the foul line to shoot those flagrant foul free throws. And makes the free throw. Got another one coming up. And sinks them both. How about that? I mean, my goodness gracious, that just, again, the letter that comes to mind is T, toughness. Neka Gumake is showing just that, why she is one of the premier players in this league, because she has the ability to get cracked in the face, but then step up and finish the play. Hasn't had a whole lot of free throw opportunities coming into this game. She's actually matched three of four here in this game. She was three of four from the free throw line all season coming into today do fall for Chicago staying in the game with three fouls. An interesting move with two and a half left in the second quarter. Uh, interesting because Ruthie Hebert is also a player who's got three fouls, so I think that's just the the nod to the veteranship, right, that, that do fall has to pick her to stay in with three fouls over Ruthie Hebert. Los Angeles also with this bigger lineup, so Chicago has no choice but to keep some size in as well to match up against Los Angeles' bigs. Tolliver taking it out from the sideline. Two and a half to play before the half. And Wheeler will set things up. Gets the screen from NECA, and the crossover can't get the finish. One point advantage now for the Sky. Their lead was at one time 17 in this first half. And Diamond to Shields loses it, and there's a jump ball. Aries Charter is proud to be the official transportation partner of your Chicago Sky with over 30 years of experience serving the Chicagoland area. So we got a jump ball coming up between Bria Holmes and Diamond DeShields. Holmes standing at 6'3", has a couple of inches on Diamond. I haven't got a piece of that. Here's Stevens. And ripped away by Coffee. Mia Coffee staying really active, crowding Stevens, able to force that turnover. LA hasn't led yet in this game, and Sloot with the takeaway. Here's Kalia Copper with the pull up for two. It's a big bucket for the sky down the stretch of this half. Copper making a really good de decision, seeing a 6'5", Zowie B coming down the lane, pops up from about 10 feet to let that drop. Wheeler to Coffee, left all alone. That's all she needed, just a little bit of daylight to sink that one. Coffee doesn't need much time to get it off. It's something she's been very effective with this series, has been knocking on that three-point shot, and Chicago has not done a great job getting out to contest, have to have a hand up in Coffee's face. She's leading the league coming into today, 60% from three. And she ties it at 34. Here's Copper looking for the lead, kicks it back out. Dufall gets ripped away. The pocket picked. Erica Wheeler off to the races and pulls it back. Wheeler with that hesitation move. And Holmes gets hacked by Stevens. That's her second. 
Dufal does a good job contesting and not fouling, but on the opposite side, Los Angeles continues to fly in and get those types of offensive rebounds. Copper coming off with the steal. Really good awareness here. Sees Zowie B, sees Mia Coffee underneath the basket, then just decides to pull up. That is a high-level IQ move from Kalia Copper. And the first lead of the game for LA. Sparks head coach Derek Fisher was really high on this second group and wanted to keep that cohesiveness of the second group together. And they provided a massive spark for this Los Angeles team, cutting down that 17-point deficit to take the lead. One-point advantage, final few seconds. Shot clock now at 10 for Chicago. Dufall for three. The lead right back to the sky. When Dufall gets in rhythm to have the ability to knock it down from the top of the key, just spreads the floor and opens up more things offensively for Chicago. The first three-point attempt of the game, first three-point make of the game for Dufall. And the turnaround for Sally P. Man, she looks good. She makes it look so easy, too. Just casually turns around, keeps that follow through, and creates just enough separation to get the shot off. Tied again here at 37. From behind, oh, L.A. trying the turnover there. It's off Chicago last. Los Angeles forcing these turnovers in very untimely times for Chicago, which really flusters the flow of play on the offensive side of the ball. Do fall and being able to knock down the three, having big step out. Remember, Chicago wants to shoot 20 a game, then Amanda Zowie B doesn't need a lot of space, in fact, is fading away, which is making the shot a lot harder on you as an offensive player, yet has the strength to finish and follow through towards the basket to get that to go. Hey, Sky fans, have you gotten your vaccine shot yet? Walgreens is proud to now offer same-day appointments at all their pharmacies, now including those ages 12 to 15. To schedule an appointment by phone, call your pharmacy or 1-800-WALGREENS. This is our shot at getting back together. Walgreens has been trusted since 1901. Well, Los Angeles has outscored Chicago in this second quarter, 24 to 10 right now. And again, has just a completely eliminated a 17 point advantage. And credit the intensity on the defensive side of the ball that Los Angeles has been able to provide. And then the rebounding as well, those second chance opportunities, five offensive rebounds, five second chance points. They've been really timely and big for Los Angeles in the course of this run they've made in the second quarter. Well, 6.8 left. And remember, the sky just before that timeout gave the ball back to LA. So it's the Sparks inbounding it. It's coffee to begin this possession. To Tolliver and Watts, did she get it? Almost. Here's Coffee. And pushing for LA. They got a hustle with a final seconds, final shot. Wheeler left it short. And she got a good look at it and she knew it. Not how Los Angeles drew it up, I imagine. That being said, very impressive how they were able to still capitalize and get a really good shot on a broken play. Credit Chicago for also scrambling as well. Well, a good first quarter for Chicago and a good first quarter here for Los Angeles as well. This is where we stand. Because of the positive quarters, one for each team, we are deadlocked at 37 at the half. Again, this is the second game between these two teams in three days. LA took the one on Friday. Who will take it here on Sunday? We are at halftime, 37 all. We will take a quick timeout. And basketball is brought to you by Magellan Corporation, proud partner of the Chicago Sky. Hyatt Regency McCormick Place, official hotel partner of the Chicago Sky, and by TickPick, the official secondary marketplace of the Chicago Sky. BMO is a proud sponsor of your Chicago Sky. BMO, we're here to help the bank you know and more. Looking at Ruthie Hebert, who at halftime here has three personal fouls. No one, in fact, on the LA side has more than one personal foul, but it's Hebert and Astu Dufal. 
who, who are sitting with three personals, and, and certainly both of them have gotten the assignment of defending Neka Gumake. so keeping them in the game is going to be crucial in the second half. The size and understanding of the opponent is what makes them so effective as post-player defenders. Three fouls. Ruti Hebert also hasn't been able to be as effective on the scoring side of the ball because she's had to be on the bench. Last game on Friday, Ruti Hebert had 12 points, 8 rebounds. Having to sit on the bench most of that first half has a, you know limited that type of effective play and points that Chicago has really missed from a front court standpoint. And, and also, it's you know at the point where the flagrant, when it was upgraded from the common foul on Astu Dufal um, to the flagrant one, it, at, at that point Chicago was leading 32 to 29. We saw a, another call that was a flagrant run on Friday against Kalia Copper, and that was a little bit of a, a momentum shift for LA. And, and we talked to James Wade even about exactly that here today, and, and, and he agreed that at, at that point it was such a shift in the game and, and there was frustration on the Chicago side. It was something that they just couldn't get past. A flagrant one happens here again today with, what, a, a three-point edge at the time. And, and those are calls, even if you don't feel like they're going your way, you don't agree with them, it's something that Chicago and this guy are going to have to get past and, and get that momentum back in some way. The good news is this happens, and then they just had a time at halftime to kind of regroup, reassess what's happening. And Chicago's going to start with the ball this half. And interesting that Neka Ogumake, she's not in the bench area. We don't see her in the bench area. It certainly is not starting in this game. It's Amanda Zowie B who's actually starting in her place right now. So that is something when you talk about the flagrant one, you know, she obviously was was affected by it. The sky get the opening bucket. And it looks like LA called an immediate timeout after that. And that's Awfully interesting. Only 18 seconds have been played in this third quarter, but we will take a timeout with everybody else. United Airlines is proud to be the official airline of your Chicago Sky. United Airlines fly the friendly skies. Well, in that timeout, you see Neka Ugumake was able to walk out of the, the locker room. You see her just kind of chatting with the athletic trainer for the LA Sparks, and she still is, is not making any moves. She's standing over in the bench area, at least, but we haven't seen her enter the game. Amanda Zowie B stays in this one. And Arella Garantes, Christy Tolliver, Bria Holmes, and Erica Wheeler is the group that starts out for LA and even coming out of that timeout. Sky forcing the turnover. And just an interesting timeout called by Derek Fisher. Obviously didn't like what he saw in that first possession defensively. Coach calling a timeout 18 seconds into the half. You know he is not happy with his team. That was a timeout to probably yell. Well, Copper and DeShields, you mentioned their numbers. They're still 0 for, for 3. A combined 0 for 6 between the two of them. Those are the top two scores for Chicago this year. Part of it is shots just not falling, and part of it is not getting into their into rhythm, into the shots they want to take as well. Los Angeles limiting that space to move. Wheeler with the crossover and an offensive foul call. Copper making the heads up offensive play, getting to the spot, reading the situation, textbook, feet outside the circle. Wheeler keeps her head down. Copper gets there first, establishes the real estate, gets the charge called. I was excited to talk about that charge, Lisa. I cut you off. You were going to keep talking, and I was well, you said, going with it. But, but you were um, way better in your comments than anything <laughs> I could possibly say. So I defer to you whenever I can. And Neko Gumake going over to the scores table to check in. And Erica Wheeler trying to shake things off. And Neko Gumake taking some extra time in that halftime locker room but now has checked back in. And Ogumake in the first half had nine points and three of four shooting. Here is Neka. Los Angeles going with a little bigger lineup between Ogumake, Zowie B, and Holmes. Well, they try to go Neka's way right away in the heads up play off of Dufal to keep the possession. Such an intelligent player and such a talented skill set as well. It 
such a tough cover as Chicago continues to be reminded of this weekend. Bria Holmes for three. Not necessarily your best three-point shooter. Holmes hasn't hit a three yet this year. They leave Ruthie Hebert just absolutely wide open, and she sinks it. Hebert shooting with so much more confidence from the outside this season. Able to just take one or two dribbles in from the half court, and, or three-point line, rather, and hit that 15-footer. We have talked about the efficiency of Neko Gumake, but Ruthie Hebert is so impressive in that area as well. And today, she's a perfect four for four. And Copper picks up another foul. That'll be number three. Copper getting stuck trying to fight over that screen. Hebert noticing there's nobody within her vicinity. She could drive a car to the grocery store and back with how much time and space she had and able to just get in a little closer to where she's comfortable. That comes with intelligence and experience, creating a comfortable shot for yourself. Interesting that you picked the grocery store analogy for your comment. Well, it was honestly where I went today. I was going to so say, was that, I knew that. I knew that. So it was at the forefront of your was, mind. It was in terms what of I was thinking. Errands to make. I love a good trip to the grocery store personally, so I imagine that most people would as well. Everybody who enjoys eating and food, right, can I mean, enjoy a good trip. Grocery stores play the best music. It's organized, it's clean. I love a good grocery store situation. The sky with a 41 to 37 advantage, and Copper was looking for something, but again, Neko Gumake shuts it down. And look at that tight defense. Holmes smothering time into Shields and forces a turnover getting into the vision of DeShields, and then Wheeler doing a nice job with the mismatch, having to guard do fall down low, and she's able to limit that vision as well and make it really difficult for Chicago to try to get the ball inside. Now Hebert guarding Wheeler, and she saw that mismatch and tried to take advantage, and she does. Wheeler doing a nice job taking advantage of the mismatch because Courtney Vandersloot was stuck guarding Neka Gumake on that possession. No look to Heber. And Courtney Vandersloot stepped on the sideline. And immediately that LA Sparks bench trying to help out the officiating staff to see it. Saw about seven people behind the bench all step up to try to help out the official with that call. They're saying Vandersloot took a step out of bounds. Had her foot on the line when going up for that. Well, 13 turnovers right now for the Chicago Sky. And I know Sky fans don't want us to remind you of that, but it's just the facts. They gave up a franchise worst or committed a franchise worst 28 turnovers on Friday, resulting in almost 30 points off of turnovers for LA. And Wheeler blowing past the Sky defense. Neka with the offensive rebound, and she'll have a couple free throws coming up. Agumake is so physical and watches the ball, picks her spots so well. The game unfolds so slowly in her eyes and she reacts quickly. Off the miss, Agumake stays aggressive, flying in from the opposite side to get that rebound put back situation. Agumake already with more free throw attempts and makes in this game alone than she had the entire season coming into this game. Courtney Vanderson, I think she's still talking about that that sideline call, <laughs> okay. trying to plead her point. Like, look, I only wear like eight, seven and a half or eight. You I was know, gonna say you gotta put the smaller shoes on next time to keep those feet in line. I mean, if the shoes weren't yellow, the ref wouldn't be able to see him as well, probably. Oh, good point. Watching Zowie V body up Ruthie Heber, trying to prevent any sort of screen situation for Chicago. Fall had her feet set, and that one popping out. Now one of two from three for us too. No. Wheeler getting aggressive and she draws a foul on a stew. And that's number four. On the defensive side of the ball, Los Angeles is bodying up to Chicago's post players, not allowing the sky to get into its offense where they can set ball screens and then pick and pop or pick and roll. Then on the offensive side of the ball, Los Angeles doing a really good job exploiting any sort of mismatch. So Chicago is either getting beat or switching, and then a guard like Wheeler's trying to drive it at Duval, who now has four fouls, and getting those types of opportunities at the foul line. Aerial Investments is a proud sponsor of your Chicago Sky. Aerial Investments, slow and steady, wins the race. So Dufal will step out as a race Stevens comes in. And remember, Stevens, who has been playing on a little bit of a minute restriction, already has tallied 
14 minutes in this one. She had a really, really good game in Atlanta last Tuesday where she tallied a, a season-high 20 minutes on the transition, and Sloot knocks down the three. Sometimes Van der Sloot just needs to take over in a scoring situation like that. Perfect example of when Chicago just needs a bucket momentum-wise. Her first bucket since 231 in the second quarter. It's been a while since she scored a bucket, but 14 points here for the game. And good defense that time by the Sky with a three-point edge looking to add to it. And Wheeler committing the foul. Ruthie Hebert perfecting the timing on the defensive side of the ball. She's got three fouls, so she's got to be careful, but anticipates really well with the timing. How about Vandersloot just making the decision? She's got space and time. Tolliver got stuck on that screen. Might as well make her pay. Sloot is a perfect two for two from three as Hebert gets hats by Holmes. Chicago doing a better job drawing those fouls, getting the ball in. We talked about spacing in the first half. Chicago went away from that in the second quarter. Now coming back, able to spread the floor a little better, creating those types of driving lanes and cuts to the basket for players like Ruthie Hebert. And the spacing and the screening, as we've talked about in the first half for, for James Wade, he was joking with you, Megan, in our Zoom call here today where you, you asked about the turnovers, and his solution was that spacing, screening. And, and he said, turnovers for us right now is a swear word. Yeah. I was like, I was not aware coming into this conversation. <laughs> we'll keep it to the T word for your Harry Potter fans out there. It's like Voldemort, right? You don't say it. <laughs> Five-point advantage now for this guy. After the Hebert free throws. She has not missed it, or she's missed the one shot and missed the first, or made the first couple of free throws that she had, and Coffey nails it from the elbow. Good decision making by Coffey. Notice Azari Stevens is coming at her on that off balance, able to get that pump fake and finish. Mia yeah, Coffey, I, I hear, was well coached in college <laughs> at Northwestern. Do you agree with that? Mia yeah, Coffey was well coached. Mia yeah, Coffey has a tremendous work ethic and great, great uh, career so far at the pro level. I remember one time she was a freshman, I was a senior, and we were running an out of bounds play, and I tried to throw the ball out to half court to our point guard, and Nia jumped up and caught it, and it wasn't even for her, but the athleticism that she <laughs> that she showed, it was like only two people can do this, Nia Coffey and LeBron James, so. Did you get the assist on the play? I, I hope so, I gotta go talk to our practice statistician from 2013, <laughs> but Coffey just having a great career at the pro level and able to do it on multiple teams. How about the tip follow by Kalia Copper? The types of second chance opportunities Chicago needs in order to stay within this ball game and maintain the speed have to finish the play. Neko Gumake now with single digits on the shot clock. Crossover with four to shoot. And a foul committed. We'll see who gets it. Ruthie Heber does. And so that's number four. So now Ruthie Hebert and Estu do fall, have four fouls. Chicago's front court in desperate foul trouble. Wheeler quicker than Hebert, so she's able to drive by and try to create, get to the basket. On the opposite end, off the DeShields miss. Copper just staying aggressive down low, and Hebert making that happen. Teamwork right there, creating that second chance opportunity. But right now, this is a major problem, having Ruthie Hebert in foul trouble the way she is with four in this third quarter. Yeah, your choice is to put a Stu Dufall, who also has four fouls on the bench. And right now, no move by James Wade to his bench. And, and again, for the fifth straight game, no Candace Parker, no Ali Quigley. No Steph Dolson. And Natasha Mack was waived today. Uh, just moments before this game, or a few hours before this game. So she isn't even an option right now to even log some minutes right now with a couple of their post players in foul trouble. And Azaray Stevens was trying to kind of work her way towards positioning and draws the foul on Brittany Sykes. That's number two. Sykes a part of a trade in the 2020 offseason with Atlanta. And Derek Fisher snatching her up. I 
at Regency McCormick Place is proud to be the official hotel partner of the Chicago Sky. Use code SKY21 to receive exclusive discounts on rooms and 50% off parking. Five point advantage. Ruthie Hebert in foul trouble with four fouls, still guarding Neka Ogumake. That is tough, and they go right to Ogumake, as LA should, and Ogumake gets the bucket. That's exactly what Los Angeles needs to do, try to just continue to go at Ruthie Hebert and try to get her on the bench, because when Ruthie Hebert is on the floor, really good things are happening for Chicago. And Hebert now trying to post up Neka. Diamond to Shields, a tough shooting night for her, and she just tosses it up, doesn't get a call, was trying to play for it, and now two of nine, or two of ten shooting for Diamond to Shields, and we got a little mix-up here, and a technical foul call. Erica Wheeler and Diamond to Shields exchanging a couple of words there, when Diamond was still on the court. And that goes back to the previous possession. DeShields coming off, trying to create a shot. DeShields feels she may have gotten fouled and then just takes down Wheeler. And Wheeler not happy with the way that situation went down. And we will sort all of this out, but as you guessed it, the officials back at the monitor to take a look at this one. On the initial play, DeShields making it look like contact was made by Tolliver Vandersloot talking to the official after that play happened, saying, where's the foul? So perhaps a frustration by DeShields trying to get oh, that yeah, foul on Wheeler. Definitely a, a frustration play by Diamond DeShields. Nope. There was a, I believe they made the, the motion of a, a technical foul that was called and, and uh, Diamond DeShields was called for, I believe a common foul and I believe they called initially a technical foul on Erica Wheeler. Yes, pointed in her direction when he called the T, the official. And that is confirmed on our stats monitor, of course, which we lean on heavily. Sitting up here at the concourse level. Just staring there. We know we can't be down there listening in to the uh, huddle with the officials. We're always uh, good to come over when we are at the scorer's table to keep us informed on what's going on. And so they're, they're again, they're looking at the monitor here. Uh, they've already upgraded one time here today as we've kind of addressed a common foul. They've upgraded to a flagrant one. Tierra Cruz, John Conley, Michael Price, again, are your officials here for this game. And so uh, Erica Wheeler, obviously, with the technical foul, now with three fouls for her as well, and Diamond to Shields picked up her first. So they, they're looking at this play as well as kind of the extracurricular back and forth that was happening after the play. And so we will take one more look. We're viewing this one for a flagrant. We get a common foul called there by Diamond. What do you think, Megan? Going, not really going for the ball there, going more so for the shoulder falling down. It would not surprise me if the official would go for the flagrant foul, but it's the aftermath as well where the technical will most likely still stand. And the technical against Erica Wheeler was for the, I think the jawing and, and the verbal back and forth with Diamond to Shields after that foul was committed. And the officials jumped on it to try to break it up immediately and gave Erica Wheeler that technical. So just shields number one on the ground and the situation gets up. Initially goes for the ball, but it's the hanging on the shoulder and dragging down, which would get an official to call a flagrant because it's not going after the ball. And then you see the jawing that happens afterwards when Wheeler gets up. And the uh, technical foul then called after that. You saw Neko Kumike getting in there right away. It's Michael Price, the official who called the technical 
on Erica Wheeler. Well, obviously some frustration from Wheeler after she obviously thought that there was more contact than warranted uh, for that personal foul by Diamond to Shields. So another kind of lengthy review here as uh, Tiara Cruz has now made her way over to talk to James Wade. And it's Michael Price who's still at the scorer's table and John Conley came over to the LA side to talk to Derek Fisher about the decision. Okay, so they have upgraded it. They're keeping the technical on Erica Wheeler, but they have upgraded the common foul on Diamond to Shields to a flagrant one. And so we will have some free throws here coming up. And Courtney Vandersloot will shoot the technical free throws on Erica Wheeler to start. And then we will go back the other way, I believe to shoot the flagrant one free throws, and Christy Tolliver will do that. And they, well, she was trying to shoot, I was gonna say. <laughs> now, Erica Wheeler is supposed to be shooting yeah. those, and I was wondering what was gonna happen, but it was a kind of a nice, and she's smiling. Look at Tolliver, she's laughing. Yeah. Wheeler also wanted to shoot them. <laughs> she was looking at her coach, the official, saying, I'm the one shooting them, right? Tolliver, obviously one of the best shooters, over 80% from the free throw line, and one of the best shooters in the WNBA. It was a nice try. I applaud that. <laughs> Just trying to be a little sneaky there, right? Just think Wheeler, of the veteran, right. they'd let her, you know, right. have her way, maybe. Wheeler is five of six from the free throw line after that, and it's a two-point advantage, so we've sorted out all that messiness there, and LA now will take it out from the sideline. About three minutes and some change left to play here in the third quarter. Wheeler to Nia Coffey. Let's see what Wheeler tries to do with this here. The 15-footer. And Neko Gumake with another offensive rebound and the jump ball coming up. And this is going to be unfair. Courtney Vanderson jumping up against Neko Gumake. Well, I was thinking Ruthie Hebert underneath came over a little late. She has to be really careful and not give the <laughs> official any possible reason to call a foul. Well, you know what? This is a bit of a height advantage. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Two players who obviously have a ton of respect for each other. Vandersloot standing at 5'8", going against Agumake, standing at 6'2". Try to go for it. <laughs> and Wheeler with a mismatch with Stevens on her. And Stevens comes up with the rebound. Sometimes the smartest players know what they are good at and what they're not good at. And Courtney Vandersloot knows she was not going to win that jump ball. And swatted away by Coffee. Eight to shoot. The shot clock doesn't reset. And Stevens got bumped on that lob. And we've got a, I think we might have a foul call. We do. So one official there on the baseline was giving it back to the Sparks. And another official out by midcourt, that's John Conley, who's calling a personal foul. Now look at Azrae Stevens underneath the basket. And who did they call the foul on? Nia Coffey. That was one of the latest calls that uh, I think has been called in a WNBA game this season, coming very much after the fact. Interesting. But Azari Stevens able to get to the foul line after this. Number 30 underneath the basket gets overshot, and Coffey gets stuck in the way as Azari Stevens tries to come down. Stevens now a perfect four for four from the free throw line. And Cooper's had a tough day. Now 0 for four. On the transition, Diamond can't hit it. Copper staying with it and tosses it away. 14 turnovers now for Chicago. Cooper the dump off to Neca and another foul. Sloot and Heber both there. 
And they're going to give it to Courtney Vandersloot. Agumake so good at drawing contact, finishing towards the basket. It is almost impossible to guard her when she has good position down low in the paint. Echo Gumake now five of seven from the free throw line. Los Angeles going back to this bigger lineup, adding Zowie B back in off the bench. Neka now with 14 points to lead the LA side. She had 14 in that Friday matchup against Chicago. A 15 point win for LA over the sky. One and done that time as Coffee comes down with it. Diamond strips it from Zowie B, and here comes Sykes with the block. She timed it perfectly. I'm speechless. That was incredible timing and anticipation from Sykes. And LA tosses it away. But my, oh my, Brittany Sykes not only can steal the ball, she can block it too. Well, the Shields is a really good defender as well. Gets the steal, then just the timing by Sykes. Really impressive play by 15 in purple. Two-point advantage. Sloot hunting down a bucket and she finds it. Vander Sloot needs to continue shooting the ball in this offense, whether that be coming off of ball screens or just coming down and knocking down a three. She's been one of the few players that has consistently been able to put the ball in the basket this game. And Stevens leaves it short. Coffee doesn't have the numbers, so pulls it out. Coffee loses it. And here comes Copper for the easy two. Just what Chicago needs to do. And the best part is, Azari Stevens, I don't even know if she knew Copper was out there, but odds are if you have Copper and DeShields on the floor, if you just throw it up the court, one of them will be there to catch it. Sykes taking it off the bounce. Final few seconds, and that'll be the final play of the third quarter. How about Azaray Stevens getting it done on the defensive side of the ball? Really active with her hands, able to disrupt, play point guard as well, and throw it up to a running Kalia Copper. Chicago with a six point edge headed to the fourth. And Lardner LLP looks beyond the law to focus on the constantly evolving demands facing their clients and their industries. Find a Foley office near you today for services that meet your needs and are tailored solutions for your business. Foley and Lardner are a proud sponsor of the Chicago Sky. Well, we head to the fourth quarter, Megan, and, and Chicago had a good first quarter. They had a good third quarter, and the, the common denominator is the, the number of turnovers. They didn't commit a lot of them in the first or the third. When Chicago takes care of the ball, good things happen. It's not rocket science, right? So taking care of the ball, getting defensive stops. Chicago also able to draw more fouls in that third quarter and get to the foul line, and the Sky are really good when they can get to the charity stripe. They shoot 87% as a team. That actually leads the WNBA, so the key to this quarter is going to be Keep getting the ball inside, trying to get to the foul line, and making sure Ruthie Hebert stays out of any sort of foul situation. Right now, when she guards Neka Agumake, Los Angeles is going right inside to Agumake, trying to get her to commit a foul. It's a lot to ask of the second-year player, but to your point, she's got four fouls. 
And Dufo also with four fouls. And Neka Ogumake absolutely ripped it away from her for an and one. Try to stop that. Off the copper miss, Ogumake stays aggressive. Chicago gets caught ball watching, doesn't come in from the opposite side. Ogumake makes you pay. And Hebert now with five personals. But she just timed that and up jumped her and did it all from behind. Hebert had the position on that rebounding attempt. With that offensive player flying through, the defensive player has to body up and create that contact in order to push back and get a favorable position. Well, Hebert stays in the game with the five personals, but Dufal is at the scorer's table to try to check in. Here's Sloot taking it all the way in the finger roll finish. Andrew Sloot hunting for her shot much more in this game, and it's been effective offense for Chicago. A season-high 19 points for Courtney Vandersloot. Cooper, I think maybe forgot where she was and how close she was to the bucket. Turn around and whoop, there it is. <laughs> we should do a song. With that line. Go you know back. what? I think you're on to something. <laughs> and Courtney Vandersloot is on to something here. Anytime she can get the ball in a situation, she's been able to drive past Cooper all night. Keep going at Cooper, trying to get to the basket, create your own shot, Courtney Vandersloot. Five point advantage. You would think that Sloot would play most of the minutes here in the fourth quarter. It's so important to keep her on it. And Amanda Zowie be trying to gain position, a little bit too much of a push up, and she gets called for the foul. That's exactly how guards should approach getting switched on to a massive post player, just trying to be disruptive, fight to stay in front position wise. Post players will get frustrated and foul. Two personals now on Zowie B. Only Wheeler has three personal fouls. LA so far pretty good in terms of the foul situation on their side. Los Angeles has switched Brittany Sykes on to guarding Courtney Vandersloot after she scored a couple straight baskets for Chicago. And then turnover there for Chicago, another one. 16 here in the game. So interesting, new fall came into this game, but not for Ruthie Hebert. So Dufal and Hebert both playing together at the same time right now. Hebert again playing with the five personals. Here's Zowie B for three and a rainbow shot that drops in. That's exactly how I would describe it too, a rainbow shot. A lot of arc on that let go, but Zowie B has been so effective and efficient from beyond the arc. A couple of three-point makes for 15 points for the game, and here comes Sloot, 21 to lead all scores. game. Largest lead have been 17 for Chicago in the first half. Here's Wheeler on the take. And Hebert kept that alive that time for Chicago with the tip out. And here comes Diamond. Trying the foul. She'll have some free throws coming up. The ball didn't even hit the ground. Excellent transition offense for Chicago. Going back to this Zowie B3, too much room for Zowie B and too much vision for her to see the basket to knock down that three. Then Vandersloot just weaving through traffic, having a field day anytime she puts the ball on the floor and gets to the basket. Nice and tight here with 7.32 left to play between these two teams. LA coming in, they've only played three games coming into today. Basically a game a week for the Sparks. But now in a stretch of about five games in nine days. Horizons for Youth is Chicago's only organization providing need-based scholarships, comprehensive support programs, and educational resources for students of all academic ability levels from kindergarten through the start of their career. 63 to 57. The Sky with a two and three record, and they've dropped all three games that they've had here at home as Heal commits the foul. Heel trying to get, yeah, Heel just trying to get through the screen. It's a penny call for it. Yeah. 
Vandersloot out of this game, we were talking about the number of minutes, Megan, that Courtney Vandersloot might play here in this fourth quarter. This is an important stretch, and Sykes feeling it from deep. Sykes taking advantage of having a rookie switched onto her, creates just enough space to knock it down. Both of her buckets have come from three. All six points have come from three. And Sykes picks the pocket of Hill and off to the races, nearly lost it. Everybody wanted to travel in this building. They don't get it. Instead, Zowie B with the bucket. I have no idea how that was not a travel. Wow. Well, all 1,200 plus were allowed in this building, threw on their whistles, and they thought this was a travel too. Let's Sykes take a look. Hits this. Oh, I mean. speechless that took two steps with while holding the ball it's in in a tight game that's a huge missed call it's a one point advantage right now for chicago we'll take a quick timeout the play of the game is brought to you by aerial investment slow and steady wins the race and working this around the diamond the shields good ball movement for the sky when the sky have good spacing, good things happen. The Shields making a read, just doing a little bit of a backdoor cut, avoiding any sort of contact down low, and boom, Diamond to Shields makes you pay on the right side. Only her one of two uh, buckets that she's had here today. It's been a tough shooting night. And so in this timeout, you see Candace Parker obviously not having the opportunity to play against her former team this entire weekend, and, and just a frustrating start to what you know, we thought was going to be sort of roses in her return to her hometown team, a, a Naperville native, and, she, and she's obviously being tested with her patience. But I just love watching her on the sideline. What you saw there, the communication with her teammates, is something that she has done every one of the five games that she has missed because of that left ankle injury. So valuable to have a player like Candace Parker in the ear of her teammates as Vanderson misses the shot. She brings so much to this team, not only from an on-the-court standpoint, but just that experience and knowledge, understanding, especially of a team like Los Angeles, who she played at her whole entire career, to be able to provide that for her current teammates is valuable, despite the fact she's on the bench. And so you see her kind of elevating that left ankle there. And, and the good news is that all weekend, she hasn't had that, that boot for the, for the week. There's Allie Quigley out with a hamstring injury. She has missed now five straight. The only time Chicago has played full strength is that opening game against the Washington Mystics. And it off to the races here as Wheeler chases it down against Sloot and finds Coffee, and LA takes the lead. Excellent body control by Coffee to still maintain that verticality to get up and finish over the front of the rim. Here's Copper. And she can create her own shot out to Sloot, who's had the hot hand here today for Chicago. And the rebound to Coffey. Three in the game now for Nia Coffey, and L.A. turns it over. Big defensive stop by Chicago as Los Angeles reclaims the lead, the last possession. Chicago has to continue to get those stops defensively. So much of their energy on offense comes from playing really hard defense. The second lead of the game for LA in this game, and here's Dufal. She's short. Heber battling on the offensive rebound. No look to time, and what a play! Beautiful assist and a wonderful finish by Diamond. Balance, strength, focus to jump up in the air and finish with the lot pass. Diamond to Shields, my goodness. That gives this guy the lead right back. Neko Gumake off the mark on that deep attempt. Just three buckets, three of 13 here for Diamond to Shield, so maybe that last one will get her going. It's been a rough shooting day for Kalia Copper and Diamond to Shields combined. The Courtney Vandersloot sinks the three-point shot and is fired up a four-point Chicago Sky advantage. Chicago staying patient on the offensive side of the ball and not throwing up a shot early in the shot clock, finding the most open player and playing to each other's strengths. 
massive buckets from Chicago as they were just down one a couple of moments ago, taking a four point lead. Ruthie Hebert battling down low, finding, look at that player. Are you kidding me? Diamond Shields with the core strength and then Vandersloot knocking down the wide open shot. Chicago holding on to a lead here in the fourth. The drive of the game is brought to you by Aries Charter, the official transportation partner of the Chicago Sky. We go back to the first quarter in one of those sloot buckets. Vandersloot just at half court made the decision to finish it and go all the way. How about the little behind the back moves, keeping the handles tight, absorbing contact, keeping Erica Wheeler from Los Angeles on her back. She's able to get a wide open driving lane to the basket. So impressive, and she has been massive from a scoring standpoint from Chicago at this game. And Courtney Vandersloot, 24 points to lead all scores, two points off of tying her career high of 26. She reached that twice in the 2017 season, one time against Minnesota, and another time, almost a month later, against Atlanta. Neko Ogumake out of that timeout, the spin move. And defended nicely that time by the Sky. Off and running now for Chicago. And Tolliver now on Courtney Vandersloot. Kalia Copper left open and knocks down the three. And suddenly, the three-point shot is the friend for Chicago. Copper staying patient, finishing her shot, getting set, taking all the time in the world to knock that down. Six of 16 shooting. The three-point shot this year for Chicago. They haven't made many per game and haven't shot many. And Coffey with a three-point answer back the other way. Coffey has been so consistent from three throughout this series, knocking it down in crucial moments for Los Angeles. Courtney Vandersloot, the kick out to Dufal. Diamond to Shields. Still looking for her first three point make. That one is a long two and it's short. Just as the shot clock was expiring. Copper all the time knocking it down with confidence. And on the other end, Agumake making the right read. And Chicago just late closing out. Well, Ruthie Hebert, after that, wait, a shot clock violation, okay. And, and that's what they were discussing. Because the shot, it, it really was, you know, right, <laughs> it was right there, whether she got it off and it touched rim before the shot clock expired, but they said it didn't, and a hard pick. And, and Diamond DeShields trying to shake that one off. Neka Ogumake whistled for the personal. Well, Ogumake coming up trying to set the screen and almost moved her arms out here. Number one and number 30. Kind of initiating the contact. And we'll go back the other way. Chicago doing a better job controlling the turnovers in this quarter. But still, those types of mental mistakes cannot happen in this tight of a game with only about three and a half left. We saw Tanae Ogumake there in her warm-ups, not playing today for just joining us. Uh, right knee soreness. So LA trying to do this shorthanded on their end as well. Nine players available for the Sparks here tonight. 12 seconds on the shot clock on this possession for LA. To Wheeler, that was a dangerous pass. And Sloop got a piece, now six to shoot. Wheeler thought about it, instead will cross him over and the finger roll finish. How about Wheeler finishing midair? Off balance, still able to get that to go. Here's Sloop. Out to do fall for three. And Sloot with the tie-up. She's going to have another jump ball coming up. And she's picking some of the tallest Sparks players to do this against. 
just staying feisty underneath, trying to get those second chance opportunities. Take a look at Wheeler here, slicing and dicey and through the air, off balance, still able to get the finger roll to go. Then Zowie B brings the ball down, and Vandersloot's pesky. As a post player, you're taught to keep the ball high, bringing it low. Players like Vandersloot are going to try to do just that. Well, she had a, a jump ball against Neka. And now she's got one against Zowie B, and she actually tried for that one. She got up there pretty high, too. Under three minutes to play on the transition push. Wheeler can't get it that time. And Chicago with one full timeout and a couple of 20s left. LA with a couple of 20 timeouts. And Diamond toss it away into the hands of Wheeler. On the push, no one's stopping her. The shovel pass there to Neka, and we're tied at 71. Those types of turnovers that are just mental mishaps can't happen for Chicago this late in the game. 20 turnovers in this game, and that is right at their average. They are dead last in the league, averaging 20 per game. And some crucial turnovers. This guy got to avoid here down the stretch here. Sloot to tie her career high. An offensive rebound for Dufault. A second opportunity. And we've got players. Wheeler is down. And, and she's pointing at that left shoulder. She is hurt. Been a really physical ball game between these two. Number 17, the right side of your screen, just looks like she trips up and falls in. Reaching for that upper body, that elbow or shoulder. Yeah, I mean, when live play was continuing. She just kept pointing at that, that left arm, which she continues to do as the entire team is standing around her. Wheeler, a starter, an important player, double-figure scorer here tonight. And again, an L.A. Sparks team. They're playing with nine players with a healthy Wheeler. And she's trying to shake it off. She's going to stay in this game. This Los Angeles team's tough, man. Neka Gumake took a Elbow to the nose, staying in. Wheeler with that left arm bothering her. So it's Sykes, Neka Ugumake, Wheeler, and Christy Tolliver and Nia Coffey. These are your players on this possession for LA. And Neka toss it away. Shoot, Steven's got to do something with it. She turned the corner, beat Neca and the shot clock to give Chicago the lead. Excellent awareness by Stevens, beating Agumake to the spot to make something out of nothing for Chicago. Under a minute to play. Two point game to Agumake. Tolliver drops it off. Neca Agumake, what do they call an offensive foul call? And Diamond drew it. Diamond to Shields, making the offensive foul call. Excellent defensive read. Taking a look at this last offense possession. Stevens, 2-1 with the awareness. Rounds the corner, sticks with it to finish. Then on the defensive side of the ball, Diamond Shields coming in, making the play, beating a Agumake to the spot to take the charge. Two-point advantage, under 40 seconds to play. Here's Copper. Courtney Vandersloot with 24 points in this game, being defended by the best defender for LA and Sykes. Sloot taking it in, and it'll stay Chicago Sky basketball with four seconds on the shot clock, and Sloot is banged up a little bit. 
reaching for that right ankle when she fell down. Driving in on Nia Coffey. Looks like she's almost stepped on a shoe. Well, again, Chicago has one full timeout remaining if they want to use it, and the timeout here is called by James Wade. And 73 to 71. Well, if Chicago can win this game, certainly Courtney Vandersloot trying to stay in it. She has been and will be a significant reason why a Magellan Corporation player of the game. The 24 points, just two off of tying her career high. And just getting buckets when they need her to get buckets, keeping it for herself a lot. And it's been at crucial moments and times. And just having a great pulse on the game, when to knock down the three. These buckets again have come just when Chicago has desperately needed a shot to fall. Such great awareness on the floor, high IQ, understands where her teammates need to get the ball, how to get to the basket, and how to operate in small spaces. Vandersloot, who we know mostly as a passer, leads the WNBA in assists with eight a game, has become the top scorer for the Chicago Sky team today with those 24 points. And really just did a good job in, in terms of just leading and setting the tone. Was responsible for the first 10 points of this game for Chicago. She scored six herself. And look at that, the alley loop, and oh, it couldn't pounce. It wouldn't fall for Diamond. Really good execution with four seconds left in the shot clock. Here's Wheeler being defended by Diamond. Crosses her over to tie it at 73. And a timeout called by Chicago. Erica Wheeler, after about a minute ago on the defensive side of the ball, being down on the ground with an injury, comes up and gets the game-tying basket. Staying with it, DeShields does a good job initially beating Wheeler down the floor, staying in front, then just the quick crossover in explosion, keeping that crossover so low. Wheeler using angles to blow by DeShields and get to the basket. Tied at 73, under 12 seconds to play. What's your feeling about where Chicago leans towards in this possession. Chicago has had most success when they're able to get the ball inside. Set a ball screen for Vandersloot and let her go to work, then have a post player roll off and try to get a pick and roll situation. Vandersloot needs the ball in her hands, though, in order for Chicago to be successful on this offensive possession. They've had the most success when she's shooting the ball, trying to score. Any preference on your end on who that post player is? At this point, you got to keep in mind foul issues here as well, but Ruthie Hebert in those pick and roll situations has been really solid. Also, Asbury Stevens in the pick and pop situation, who's already knocked down a three today, feeling confident. The important part for Chicago is going to be everybody crashing the board's been making sure you have somebody ready to get back and prevent any sort of transition Los Angeles can draw up. Okay, so Chicago using its its last full time out here. <laughs> Courtney Vandersloot, 10 of 16 shooting. The, the 10 field goals made is also one off of tying a career high for her, sitting at 11. It'll be Diamond DeShields taking it out. So it's DeShields, Stevens, Vandersloot, Hebert, and Copper who are in for Chicago. Vandersloot being guarded by Los Angeles' best defender, Brittany Sykes. That makes sense, right? Here is Vandersloot with eight seconds, and Sykes with the foul to stop the clock here at 8.4. Only two team fouls here for LA, so definitely some, some fouls to give. And so a similar setup here for Chicago. And looking to go to Stevens. And we've got another timeout here on the James Wade side. They're trying to figure out where exactly they're going to take it out. It's a short timeout that's called. It's all that's left on both the LA and the Chicago side. And, and both, I think, huddles are trying to figure out where they're going to put the ball, baseline or sideline. 
Los Angeles doing a really good job defensively trying to cut off the head of the snake for Chicago, that being Courtney Vandersloot, just not letting her catch it at all, denying the ball as much as possible. Sykes does a great job at using her length and speed to try to deny those types of situations. It'll be from the sideline, but really tucked away in that corner. It's a tough inbounds. Tough angle. Yeah, tough angle for Chicago. Holmes is 6'3", going to be put on the ball, using her length to try to obstruct me view. Okay, so they get it out to Vandersloot. Vandersloot with three. Sloot trying to take it inside and leaves it short. We're headed to overtime. She got to look at it. And she's been successful all day long trying to get the ball to the basket. Courtney Vandersloot, the right decision, trying to drive and create something. Chicago got a decent look, even just trying to draw that foul off that play. It's a shot, and it's a decent shot. Vandersloot coming in, trying to use that ball screen from Stevens. Coffey gets switched on to her, and Coffey does a good job not fouling Vandersloot as she tries to go up for it. A decent shot for Chicago with six seconds left at that weird angle sideline out of bounds. Last overtime game for Chicago, September 6th of 2019 at Connecticut. And so tied here at 73 with a new five minutes on the reset. And L.A. rallying there in the fourth quarter, 22 to 16, outscoring them by by six in that fourth quarter. So what, what are you going to look for here in the initial stages of overtime? Well, Los Angeles has been really successful when they've gotten the ball into Neka Agumake, which they went away from because Chicago was able to push Agumake out of some position. So look for Los Angeles to continue trying to create that inside-outside basketball. L.A. shooting the ball pretty well from three right now as well. 41%, they're seven for 17 from that range. So again, anytime you can get that inside outside action, which Los Angeles has been able to do throughout that game early, look for them to do that. As for Chicago, keep getting the ball to Vandersloot and getting her in a pick and roll situation because she's been so effective throughout this game. Going to be very crucial for Chicago to not turn the ball over in this overtime period. It has been the kryptonite for this team throughout the season now. It's becoming a trend. Have to take care of the ball, especially in this crucial five minutes. Again, they're sitting at 20 turnovers in, in this game. And uh, that's that's what they average. I mentioned that's last in the league, but but keep in mind, you know, they're, they're a team that's had to bounce between different lineups, different rotations. They have three all-star players not playing for them right now. Three starters in terms of Stephanie Dolson trying to qualify for the three-on-three -three Olympic basketball team. Allie Quigley still out with the hamstring. And Candace Parker out with a left ankle injury. You know, you got to talk for a long time when you rest out all those injuries. Missing a lot of points, a lot of leadership, and a lot of production with those three players out. So the first possession going to Chicago. L.A. and Chicago both now have gained another full time out to begin this overtime session as Copper is well off the mark and a shot clock violation. Los Angeles coming out and really getting into Chicago's girl defensively. The defensive intensity has been high for Los Angeles throughout the entirety of the second half. So 21 turnovers now for the Sky. And here is LA's turn. Coffee has played some important minutes down the stretch in the fourth quarter and starts the overtime session for LA. Coffee's been effective offensively, but also her defensive game has been really on point for Los Angeles. Heber turning, spinning, and firing for two. Heather Hebert with a size advantage down low at 6-4 going against Mia Coffey. 
able to just do a quick little post move finish at the rim. 12 points. She's got five rebounds. Has only missed one shot. Neca with the offhand that time. Off the heel. Sykes has been has given the defensive assignment of Sloot. And Stevens is off the mark. Neca with another rebound. Seven here in the game. Wheeler with that hesitation, and it drops in to tie it at 75. Wheeler stays with it, coming off the screen. Copper tries to go over, so gets caught on the screen, and then a late hedge comes out for Chicago, and Wheeler's able to finish. Huge points in the paint production from both sides. 32 for LA to 38 for the Sky. And no look, working it around. Copper had a big three towards the tail end of the fourth quarter, but not that time. One of five shooting from three for Copper. As Wheeler has taken a shoulder, the heavy dose of shot attempts. But again, you know, she's battling again with that, that left arm injury. And slow to get up. Coffee helps her up. Trying to get an advantage. Copper gets a piece of the ball from behind and gets Wheeler off balance. Off to Wheeler. And she's thinking score. Rebound to Sykes. Another opportunity. Ogumike gives LA the lead. Los Angeles staying aggressive down low, hunting for those second chance opportunities. And Ruthie Hebert is done. called for that moving screen last possession if she's not well hold on but the moving screen call was on Ruthie Hebert and said they said the turnover according to Vandersloot so Hebert stays in and coffee for three and now it's a five point LA advantage Massive bucket for Los Angeles. Coffee has been money from three-point land. Have to get a hand up in her face. And so we're being told that actually Derek Fisher is wondering why Ruthie Heber didn't pick up her sixth personal on that play. The officials coming over to tell him, I thought that they had, initially, that's why I said that, I thought initially that they had done, they did like a, a hit I movement. I thought the same thing. And it looked like because they, they did the hit movement as if she had stuck herself out there a little bit too much for the offensive foul trying to set the screen, but instead they called a turnover on Courtney Vandersloot on that play. And it's a play that is not reviewable, so we play on as Sloot hits the three-point shot. A Sloot seal of delivery when Chicago needs it most. Talk about coming in clutch. Sideline out of bounds. Hebert setting the screen. Sykes goes under it. That's just enough time for Vander Sloot to let it fly, and she does get fouled when Sykes comes late on the closeout, trying to prevent. Looks like she almost just trips over Vandersloot almost. A wow. Career high game.
verbiage that they used to our production staff was a reckless closeout on that play. And so this is significant because an opportunity here to tie it. Because she had the one with a foul committed, and now Chicago can take the advantage. That was the free throw for the flagrant one, which, which replaces the and one opportunity. And now Chicago retains possession because of the flagrant one call. And a one point advantage here for LA. Los Angeles switching out all ball screens. And here's Copper trying to take the lead. Quick hands that time by Sykes. It'll be LA basketball. And they're gonna review this with under two minutes to play. Well, they'd have to see enough to overturn this call. Again, the call on the court is LA basketball. So they need to see enough. These officials, as you mentioned, they've, they've spent a lot of time over there in that corner there uh, looking at the monitor. Right now, Tierra Cruz and Michael Price are the officials taking a look at this, and they're looking at some of the same angles that we're showing you right now. They need enough. on some of those angles to be able to overturn it. LA looking to take two from Chicago for the weekend, and the Sky looking to snap a three-game losing skid. Well, the last time that they lost three straight at home, they once had a, a seven-game at home losing skid back in the 2017 year. Normally the home court in Wintrust has been friendly to them, but we've addressed, you know, they've been shorthanded with their roster situation. So a lot of factors going into that three game losing skin. And now it looks like a, a decision has been made as the officials are talking about it amongst themselves. This would be huge for an LA team though to, to come away with, with a couple of wins. It'd be huge for both of these teams. But to go on the road, pick up a couple of wins. These two teams again will meet each other, this time in Los Angeles on June 5th. They saw enough to overturn it. So now it's Chicago Sky basketball. Just about everything has gone right for Chicago in this last minute. They trailed by as many as five in this overtime session. That four-point play by Courtney Vandersloot, the flagrant one call is huge. And they get another possession, but they toss it away. One-point advantage for LA. Sparks looking to be smart with it. And they're finding coffee on the curl. It's blocked by Tymon. The Shields getting the position, just getting a hand up in order to get that block.
Courtney Vandersloot with a career high night. She gives it up to Diamond. Who's going to take the shot? Here's Heber with the heave. Stevens with the offensive rebound. That is blocked. And it's Stevens committing the foul. Stops the clock at under 50 seconds in the extra session. A lot of opportunities for Chicago to get to the bucket or at least get to the foul line this last possession. Los Angeles scrambling. Hebert gets it, and Stevens gets hit in the head on that play. And Los Angeles able to come out unscathed and get the ball, and now we'll have the possession coming down here. So Los Angeles calling the timeout and, and using their full timeout that they got here in the overtime session with under 50 seconds left to play. Defensively, let's focus on that first here for Chicago. What's got to be their, their number one area of concern? Well, watch Neko Gumake. She's been somebody that's been able to post up and get really good positioning down low. Nia Coffey, as of the last couple of possessions in this overtime, has also been a player that Los Angeles has looked to go to to get some productivity. But watch any type of player like an Erica Wheeler or Sykes trying to get to the basket. Important to not foul here. Try to just play really good defense, stay in front of players. The help defense also has to be on point in order to prevent any sort of kickoff last second for an easy lay-in. Well, you mentioned Nia Coffee. She's playing 30 minutes here off the bench. You see Chineo Gumake again in the, in the yellow warm-up. And, and she's unavailable, hasn't been able to play with right knee soreness. So LA without one of its starters for tonight. Nia Coffey has logged a ton of important minutes in the fourth quarter and in the overtime session. 15 points and 30 minutes of play off the bench. And she's done a great job on the defensive side of the ball as well, using her 6-1 frame, long and athletic, to really get in and be disruptive. It's Stevens defending NECA. Down on the block, more towards the right top of your screen. And here's Wheeler looking to take on Copper, and she takes it all the way for two, and a huge bucket for the Sparks. Wheeler staying patient, isolating on that side. She had a full entire lane on the right side to work with and get to the basket. Wheeler has wanted it, and she's wanted every single big bucket to take, and an offensive foul call that time. And Ruthie Herbert, that is her sixth personal. And she is done. Los Angeles runs an ISO, lets Wheeler just go to the right side of the floor and go to work, and she's able to get by her defender and get to the basket. Then Heber just moves, trying to hit Sykes, and just ends up moving, and that is the offensive foul called. Astu Dufal has checked in for Ruthie Hebert, who now has fouled out. 12 points, 5 of 7 shooting. She logged about 29 minutes, but was saddled with foul trouble going all the way back to the first half. She only played four minutes in the first half after she had picked up three personals. Wheeler is whistled for the offensive foul that time. And back and forth and we huge, continue to go. A huge mistake though for Wheeler. Wheeler just trying to get open, trying to create that separation, ends up pushing Kalia Copper, getting called for the foul. Take a look. Well, she's at the top, 17. Of, the top of your screen, the top right, you see Kalia Copper in her and she just throws Copper off of her. It's a complete foul, too. You can't extend your arms and just try to push your, uh, your opponent like that. It's going to get called an offensive foul like it just did. So you go for a quick two here, or you go for a, a game time three? Always going for the quick two. Still a lot of time left. Just come down, get a shot, really good shot. Try to get a drive to the basket as well. And that's an area where you drive to the basket and try to get fouled somewhere that Chicago's gotten away from trying to get to the foul line as much. 
keep the ball in Vandersloot's hand and give her a nice screen or try to get Copper or to shield an open lane to drive and get that too. So Chicago is uh, used up its last full timeout. Now that being said, if you have a wide open three, take it if it's a good shot, but no need to force a three with this much time left on the clock. As we've addressed, so the three-point shot has not been the strength for Chicago during the season. They're 35% in this game. Now, Courtney Vandersloot has shot with the highest efficiency here tonight at four of six, but as a team, she's hit four of their seven. And as a team, they are seven of 20 going into this possession. Copper from around the screen. And the shot clock is still in play. Here's Diamond to Shields looking to take it, and she dribbled it away. Into the hands of LA. They give it out to Sykes, who gives it right back. Crucial turnovers by both of these teams down the stretch. Just mental mistakes. Diamond to Shields trying to move with a lot of traffic, ends up turning it over. Then on the other side, Sykes just, with a miscommunication, throws it away. And so a 20-second timeout now by Chicago. And we go back to this possession. There's a turnover by DeShields. Who almost trips over Wheeler's foot. Then coming down, Wheeler tries to throw a cross-court pass to Sykes, and it just goes straight through her hands. And so now does your answer change about the two or the three? You want to, I, I think the best way to go about this is again, getting that quick two, trying to get a really good high percentage shot unless the three is there, but it has to be quick because you have to have enough time to come down, get a foul and go back. Well, LA has shot about 78% accuracy from the free throw line. If it does come down to that and Chicago, they get a chance at the free throw line. They haven't missed 12 for 12 in this game. 12.2 left to play. Chicago trailing by three. Here's Vandersloot with a career high 28 points. Gets it out to two fall to tie it. Off the rim that time. Final few seconds. That's the final shot of the game. And LA gets out of here taking two from Chicago. Chicago coming down, trying to go for the three-point for the tie with 12 seconds. Dufal was had a decent look at the basket, but not the player you necessarily would want making that three-point shot at the end of the game. Yeah, only a 25% three-point shooter coming into this game. One of four in the game. And an interesting decision and last possession for the Sky. And it's all smiles for LA. They pick up a couple, improve to 500 overall. Chicago drops to two and four. For Megan McEwen, I'm Lisa Byington. So long from Wintrust Arena, LA victorious in OT.